Keep it going for your hosts, you guys. And keep it going for yourselves. It's a sold out crowd, New York City. Let me hear you. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Just know you guys are the reason my grandma couldn't get in the show tonight. So, no, oh, man, this is a cool, cool crowd, man. I feel like I can tell you everything. Like, uh, biggest thing going on in my life, you guys, I recently lost 132 pounds. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Uh, of course, I'm talking about my girlfriend, Julie. I don't know if you guys saw her. Anyway, it's kind of dark in here. Shit. Now, I'm originally from Caracas, Venezuela. You guys find foreigners in the house? Let me hear you. Okay, there you go. Okay, I like that, I like that. No hidden foreigners here, yes. We're strong, I like it. Now, a lot of people ask me what it's like growing up with foreign parents, you guys, especially my friends when I moved to America. And I feel like you guys can relate to this. Foreign parents are a lot like eating an edible. You just never know when they're gonna hit you. You gotta watch out. <laughs> We learn to duck at a young age. Watch the chocolate, bitch. Ah, it'll get you. It'll get you. Now, I actually put on 35 pounds from the pandemic, you guys. Anybody else put on a few? <laughs> yeah, it's an honest crowd. I like you guys. I go, you know what I realized? I, that I was getting away. I went to see my mom, right? And I was watching TV. And all of a sudden, I noticed she's like staring at me. And then she like looks at me and goes, Ay, Carlos. It looks like we need to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> and that was it, she just stared at me. I said, wait, what, what the fuck? <laughs> this is not how we do things here. Not at all. I gotta say, true story, she's actually writing an autobiography, you guys, which is pretty cool. However, I read the manuscript the other day and I realized that I wasn't in it at all. <laughs> and I asked her why, she said she didn't want to ruin it. So what the fuck? <laughs> Putting her in a home, this is bullshit. <laughs> You guys are fun, you guys are fun. I like you. Now, I was uh, scrolling through the old TV the other day and I stamped on the story on Fox News that was warning about how artificial intelligence is gonna take all of our jobs. Have you guys seen that? That's a new thing. Guys, Fox News never told me that AI was Mexican. What, I thought it was them. <laughs> She's got it, there you go, take a second, take a second. Turns out it doesn't stand for artificial intelligence. That's where, aye, there we go. That makes so much sense. And we are in an election year, you guys, so I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I have to make the decision to stop watching Fox News. And I'm not gonna lie, I also have to stop watching CNN. And I stopped watching Fox News for the same reason I stopped watching CNN. That's because I can't afford cable. It's very expensive. <laughs> Times are tough, you guys. Times are tough. All right, let me hear from my relationships in the room. Anybody dating, married? Let me hear you. Yay! There you go. There you go. I feel like as the darker we got, the quieter the claps got. So <laughs> that's for you guys to talk about after the show. That's for you. But I do have a girlfriend, you guys, I do. Her name is Julie, but you guys don't know her because she goes to a different school. <laughs> She's totally real, <laughs> I swear to God. Now, I was a little bit of a late bloomer, I think I'm a lot of you guys, I was. Like, I actually had my first kiss when I was 16 years old. Wow, that got very quiet when I said that. <laughs> Definitely gonna think about that on the way home. That, that woo is way too late over here. <laughs> that, that ship has sailed. But I'm not glad I was nervous. I was so scared. So, I mean, starting kissing that late, I thought if I'm bad at this now, this could totally ruin my dating reputation. You know what I mean? But I gotta say, Father Thomas was a total pro, you guys. He was so gentle. <laughs> it was so nice. <laughs> not knowing they had those cushions to get on your knees. I was like, thanks, Daddy. I mean, Father, show some respect, Carlos. Show some respect. See, I wrote that joke, but you all laughed, so we're all going to hell. Woo! Yeah! That's right. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are fun. I like you. Yes. My goodness. Now, I've been with my girlfriend now for six years, you guys. I'm lucky to say we're in a faithful relationship. Because cheating is bad. 
Cheating is very bad. Write that down, Queens bros. Write that down. Like, actually, growing up, my buddy's dad actually cheated on his, on his mom with one of his patients, and it totally, like, ruined the family's life, you guys. Especially because he was a veterinarian, and, uh... <laughs> Ugh. But it totally makes sense because he always carried peanut butter with him, but I thought he was allergic, so now it makes connecting the dots there. Connecting the dots, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> now, my girlfriend actually comes from a family of doctors, you guys, so I decided to latch on because I'm a comedian and I'm broke, bitch. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, you know, I had this. A couple months ago, I had this rash down there that I was very nervous of, you know? So I decided, having a family of doctors right there, I decided to show her uncle the rash and tell me what it was, you guys. That's the most awkward way to find out he was a psychiatrist. Um, <laughs> shit. He said, how does it make you feel? Not good. No, not good. Not good at all. Let's see, how about kids? How do we feel about kids in the house? Do we like kids? Do we want kids? Yeah. Mm, that kind of sounded like a fuck those kids. <laughs> Just saying. Those were tentative woos. Those were tentative woos. I'm not gonna, I used to really want kids, you guys. But now I'm in my mid-30s, I'm getting to the age where I kind of gotta, gotta share it off the pot. I don't know if I do anymore. Because I just feel like every kid, doesn't matter who it is, they reach a certain age, but they just become jerks. Always, yeah. She was like, I was a jerk, I know it. <laughs> like, I remember in high school, a group of bullies actually put out a naked video of me on the internet, you guys, which was so humiliating. Especially when I found out it had zero views. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I worked out all summer, okay? I was looking good. I sent it to a couple of my friends and no one would watch it. <laughs> Bullshit. But I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I'll probably get some judgment. I uh, also did try to make a sex tape once. I did. I did. Don't judge me. I was young. I needed the money. It was last week. Times are tough, I told you. It was. But I'm not gonna lie, I finished way too quick, so it was more of a sex gif, you know what I mean? <laughs> you can watch it 17 times in four seconds. There's a lot of replay value to it. The views are racking up. Yes, yes, yes. I, th I think the worst humiliating job I ever had, you guys, was in college. I actually tried to sell semen for money to make, like, make my tuition money. It's true. You can sell your swimmers and make some good money out there. And I can lie, you can judge me all you want, but I learned a lot about business while selling my swimmers in college. For example, I learned that selling semen is a terrible door to door business. No one wants that. <laughs> you always got to bring a towel just in case you trip. It's never. Never know. <laughs> oh, man. And like uh, your host just told you guys, I was uh, on MTV. And I was actually recently on uh, Fox Nation Taxi Cab Comedy, which is a fun little TV show. And that's uh, pretty cool stuff, but I'm not going to lie. I think the best time, the most memorable experience of me forever will be my first time on TV, you guys. In fact, it was awesome. It was, it was so memorable. In fact, it reminded me so much of the first time I had sex. Like it was super quick and I was barely in it, but baby, I felt like a star, woo! <laughs> and my uncle was watching both times. I'm like, get out of here, Uncle Steve, what are you doing? This is weird, so strange. <laughs> oh man, I love you guys. You guys are fucking awesome, really, really, really. <laughs> Oh man, I love I love hearing phrases from people. Like I have a buddy, I don't know if you guys have heard this, who says he uh, grew up in the school of hard knocks. You guys ever heard that phrase? Yeah. Yes. I'm not glad that's a much cooler way of saying he can't read that good. There's no <laughs> there's no summer school in the school of hard knocks. Just hard knocks. There's no books, just knocks. Write that down. Tell your friends. <laughs> But now, I, like I told you guys, I'm in my mid-30s. Uh, actually, I guess here in the second half of my turn 36 this year, you guys. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to get those body pains everywhere. We just wake up in the middle of the night, just, ah! It just doesn't feel good. So I decided to get my first massage, you guys. I decided to go. And I'm not gonna lie, I was so excited, but now that I had it, I don't know if it's for me. 
It really isn't. Like I walked in there, right? And all of a sudden they had me take off all my clothes, which is so weird. Especially because I went in for a foot massage. So I was like, wait, what are we doing here? <laughs> this is not cool. That's the last time I go to my uncle for a massage, you guys. <laughs> uh, you guys have been so amazing. If you like what you saw, follow me on Instagram at Carlos Does the World. Keep it going for your host. Yeah.